Hey guys, so I'm a little bit under the weather, so that's why I haven't been watching that much recently. I haven't been feeling all that great. Um, but I decided to go ahead and check something out today. And that's going to be Kane's Wrath, the best RTS in Command and Conquer's Ascend Off. So, um, this was done by Bricky, and I've seen a lot of stuff that Bricky has done. I also know he's involved with Adeptus Ridiculous, which, you know, gives me no end of amusement. Um, this was requested by Zach, and I'm getting a phone call. It was a member of the Night Lawyers trying to tell me about my car's extended warranty. Um, in any case, um, I never got to play Kane's Wrath. I don't know too much about Command and, and, Command and Conquer. I did play, I definitely played one, not sure if I played two, but I remember all the, I remember all the, you know, hype about how many actors were going to be involved in it, but, um, as far as Bricky goes, I've known about Bricky ever since The Legend of Nip Nip, and, um, yeah, ever since then, uh, I've heard him come up, but I've never, I don't think I've really seen anything by him, I do know he did a Factions, uh, video for Warhammer 40k, that's very, very popular, I don't know if I'll ever be able to watch it, but we'll see, in any case, Let's get into Kane's Wrath, the best RTS and, and Command and Conquer send-off. Here we go. When you think of a villain, especially a villain in the Command and Conquer series, generally your mind goes to Kane. See that man just bathed in red light, the crazy coat he's got on. He really emanates the power of a villain, doesn't he? But truly, it's not the fact that he's a fanatical cult leader. It's not the fact that he's a murderous crazy man or his drip. <laughs> he's evil because he's bald. And that's Ow. why you need my sponsor, Keeps. Did you know really? two out of three men will experience some form of male power and baldness in Let their time? In fact, sometimes Let very early on. And the most important Let thing to do is to make sure thing that play. you are preventative. And with Keeps, you can... Today, like, I was, I was talking to Strider for all of 15 seconds, and he said... Uh, I turned on the video because I was like, just look how, look at me. I look terrible right now. He was like, oh, I didn't know you were in the last airbender. Strider's a prick. Blame Strider in the comments below, please. And like this video while you're at it. Make sure that you do not become a villain like our boy Kane here, despite this fantastic drip. <laughs> and I've sung the praise of Keeps pretty often because the company seemed great, the products seemed great, and the reviews were wonderful. And Yay. just about a month ago, I decided to take the plunge into it myself. I mean, I'm pretty happy with where my hair is at right now. I'm jealous of your hair. But I noticed, you know, there's a little, there's a little bit here and there, and I'm like, hey, you know, the point is preventative anyway, so okay. here I am with it. It takes a few months to really settle in, but that's kind of the point. If nothing changes, that I'm doing it right. And I felt that considering how much I advertise this product, I should be definitely taking more of a chance to use it and not just rely on other reviews. So with that being said, you can go down in the description and go to keeps.com slash bricky to get 50% off your first order once again. So if you're golden, going bold like me, I'll be having this in the description down below. Go get yourself some hair stuff. Is in the description, keeps.com slash bricky. Do not be like Kane. He's a very bad man. And with that being said, Thank you for sponsoring this video. And let's talk about Zone Raiders. Hello, everyone. My name is Ricky. Currently experiencing crippling insomnia from hearing Missile Squad ready for combat in my every waking nightmares. Listen, strategy games, they're hard. They're hard from both a technical and big brain point of view. Okay. Having a good APM while micromanaging units, buildings, production queues, and whatever the hell your opponent is doing, takes a lot of skill and you know who always has had a skill issue this guy bricky have skill issue hard thing make bricky scared bricky allergic to hard thing you go near hard thing and go <clears throat> but for some reason my parents thought it was a good idea to buy me starcraft brood war when i was a really young kid and god damn it did i have a good time with it so I young everyone RTS player bricky decided to keep that train rolling jumped onto the command and conquer series with command and conquer three and fell in love and from there i mean starcraft is a very popular rts game arguably the most popular rts game out there but it is not my favorite that title goes to command and conquer 3 kane's wrath okay. kane's wrath is just a gem it is graduated from the goat straight to moose command and conquer moose. 3 oh my god what a game made with so much love so much care so much so much 
polish when fun was at the forefront and it was made by ea so sales figures were there but yes the fun <laughs> and i mean you know me well okay maybe some of you don't know me for those who don't know me hi i'm bricky i make video but besides that you know i just <laughs> jump around from topics i just bounce around talking about where the hell i want to talk about so i there feel like go. talking about command conquer 3 kane's wrath because it's a goddamn amazing rts game okay fuck you i wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them so Command & Conquer 3 is a long-running RTS series, or was long-running. Sad. Fuck you, EA. There was Generals, <laughs> Red Alert, Tiberium Wars, just many types of Command & Conquer games that spanned very many genres and how they played. Now, being 26, I didn't really get into Generals very much, and I didn't really get into Red Alert until Red Alert 3 came out. And even that, I mean, Command & Conquer Tiberium Sun was the prequel to Tiberium Wars, and that came out way, way, way back when. Yes. So I got really big into Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars when it came out. And jumping into that game, I was a little surprised, especially as a younger kid with the campaign, because you know, RTS campaigns are a little hit or miss. And they are very much so. It was a little so. hit or miss with its camp and its insane amounts of cheese, but it took oh, yeah. some genuine issues. What are you doing? He's defenseless. He's the enemy. Okay, so for starters, all of the actual like live action acting and stuff for one of these days, I'm going to do re start doing reviews because when she ran in, it reminded me of Battlestar Galactica. And if you guys haven't been seen Battlestar Galactica, you don't know what you're missing. For all these games are uh, border between being somewhat decent to being passable to being absolute crap. It just depended on what mission you were on. The script was all over the place. The sets were funny, you know, but at the same time, there was so much charm to it that it was acceptable. Mm. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space. I want you to look at Senator Armstrong of Metal Gear Rising, all right? In terms of story, Armstrong being the final villain is like the dumbest thing on the planet. He was barely set up at all, mentioned like once, and then just arrives like a 20-minute cutscene. It's it's honestly pretty awful writing, but it's so fucking funny and charming that you don't give a shit because it's because it's nano machine man i kind of get that feeling a little bit except the game deals with some pretty specific and highly political issues okay i'm getting ahead of myself tiberium wars okay. is a sequel to tiberium sun that came out in the 1990s the third game follows the third tiberium war tiberium is a mysterious alien substance that crash landed on earth this was sometime in the 1990s and it began terraforming the landscape mm -hmm. it would constantly mutate the local flora and fauna and overall just spread pretty rapidly and it was generally dangerous and toxic to humans however it was also a very potent fuel source a very powerful resource so despite the obvious dangers of toxic gas massive human mutation this becoming such a major resource and how much it was spreading across the planet made it very sought after in the 2040s about 50 years later this is when our two major factions are fighting the global defense initiative or gdi is the general law and order kind of group they're an amalgamation mm -hmm. of a ton of countries all coming together with the the pretty standard like american looking law and order and and strength in terms of military might kind of group they're trying to combat the spread of the crystals and generally protect everybody and keep everyone all huddled together in these nice safe zones Yay. and they're fighting the brotherhood of nod the brotherhood of nod believe that the crystals are serving as humanity's next evolution that the use and mutation etc of tiberium is what will bring people up into i don't know some kind of like massive new livelihood you know how that kind of people go but yeah. they're led one of the main things that was kind of fun about tiberium as it related to other games um so world of warcraft 2 when it came out it was the big game that everybody wanted to play. it was the big rts and there was very and i mean Next to no difference in the units between orcs and humans. There was there was literally just none. The only thing that was really different was the Death Knight and um, the Paladins. Those were the only two things that were in any way, shape, or form different. I think this. I think there might have been the Wizard as well, but there really wasn't a lot of difference until you started getting into the higher tier units. 
if you took the main front line fighter for the um, orcs and put it against the, you know, the, the basic orc and then the basic uh, footman, whoever got the first hit in would win. And it was kind of annoying in that regard now that I think about it, but at the same time, you know, what can you do? In any case, the, games like this, though, was the first time that you ever had to balance things out. And that's what everybody loved about StarCraft. The armies were so drastically different. The way you had to fight with them was so drastically different. But it was balanced in a strange way. By their very, very smooth leader, Cain. The world has generally collapsed altogether and any kind of national border has been removed or assimilated and now the entire world is ran into zones. You've got blue zones, yellow zones, and red zones. Mm -hmm. Blue zones are life as we generally know it, almost free of any kind of Tiberium and the GDI take up almost the entirety of the blue zones. Yes. The yellow zones have light Tiberium exposed. It's where life sucks. It's around here and there. It's generally demilitarized, very, well, you know, scavenger-like, and Nod takes up most of these areas. Red zones are nearly uninhabitable. You have the ultimate suck. Nod has some of these as well, but generally if you're in a red zone, you... You just can't live there. See, these cutting up of zones is generally where the overall fighting between GDI and Nod take place. Because to the Brotherhood of Nod, they see GDI as the oppressors. They have gone out and taken all of the habitable blue zones, all of the areas that are the safest, and they have shoved everyone else out. GDI are forcing the impoverished and the unworthy out of the safe zones into the scavenger wastelands. This generally creates anger and animosity to the people pushed out by GDI and have them go directly to the direct opposition, the fanatical terrorist group, Brotherhood of Nod. Because when you and your family have been pushed out of a safe zone to scavenge for yourself, joining a fanatical group to tear down the oppressors is not that far from an understandable course of action oh yeah there's also the Skrin too that's yeah. like the tiberium aliens they just kind of show up at the end i mean they have their own lore and stuff but honestly it's not as interesting to me they're really cool looking but they're just like yeah they're okay looking but at the same time they're not really the main focus of the game hey, here's your third faction you know looking mm -hmm. back at it it's really nice when a game genuinely has a political theme going on with it and i mean like real politics not oh my god twitter mad <laughs> gay people and games <laughs> politics no 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 like real politics the creation and enforcement of borders the issue of wmds for both the big and small factions the fanaticalization <laughs> radicalization <laughs> of people forced out by a government they believe don't care about them and the horrible things people will do to that government and its citizens in response and mm -hmm. despite the fact that this game is made by EA, some balls <laughs> to that. Now this campaign still has its very goofy moments and still very campy it, yes. at times, but the actual thing, the actual entire scale of a political war, it's really fascinating, which creates the foundation for this gameplay. And boy, ow, I forgot I had a bruise there. <laughs> it's good gameplay. The game is fun so in tiberium wars and if i haven't made this clear command conquer 3 tiberium wars is the first game kane's wrath is like the expansion of it but in tiberium wars the original there were three factions the gdi nod and scrit gdi mm -hmm. is the military group of peacekeepers you, it's really kind of the american military style of group their stuff looks generally clean disciplined and functional their units move and speak generally rather professionally but just have enough personalities stand out things like rifleman squads securing structure predator tanks predator ready for battle look and generally sound the part but as you go up the tech tree that personality starts to really make its way out things like zone troopers we got this handled mammoth tanks mammoth advancing commando he's going dirt tasting i'll give gdi a bit more intrigue in their character voicing that has them stand out as yeah they're part of the peacekeeper group but these people have been around mm. they're allowed to talk a little more loosely because they're veterans as far as not is concerned despite the whole concept of fanaticalization all that stuff not is definitely playing the role as the bad guys and i mean they're 
they're terrorists so it's fair but their voice lines really show it nod is a militant force and they act like it mm. their buildings are a bit more looming their presence is a lot more sinister the way things are curved and sometimes spiked or like even things like their airfield just like a normal bad airfield. it's like a giant spire in the sky their voice acting is impeccable though and honestly nod might be some of the best voice acting in an rts game i have ever played i mean the militant squad alone shows what they're all about the oppressors must die make them suffer saboteurs are sinister <laughs> attack bikes are just total masochists let's go for a hunt kill them all things like flame tanks have this grueling brooding nature to them cleansing fire hell just that way a flame tank says the Hmm. their own name flame tank just that venomous delivery is oh this also moves with their tactics and weaponry you know gdi you know one of my favorite um characters to play in um league of legends as a matter of fact is Jin, and the reason i love Jin is because he flat out sounds like a psychopathic murderer um uh just the for ever since the first time i ever played him one i i really do like his kit there's dust flying around here sorry guys but at the same time one of the things about him was his voice lines um you would you would sit there and just build up and you just get somebody low health and then you'd want to do you'd want to hit his fourth shot because he would he would yell out four when he did it and you would be sitting there behind the screen until you did it for like the 10th or 12th time, hitting that fourth shot kill on somebody and yelling out, four! Because <laughs> I'm, I'm an idiot. I'm a nerd. I'm going to continue this video because I'm stupid. Feels like it has a pretty standard way of doing its fighting. You've got air support, you've got tanks and infantry, all kinds of stuff. Nod, it's a little more mischievous. They are a use what's at their disposal. Instead of machine guns and tanks, they have lasers and Tiberium upgraded missiles and flamethrowers. They have a unit called the Reckoner, which is like a suicide truck where you just run it into your opponent's base, you plant it down, and it becomes really tanky, and then everything inside just generally burns things to death normally it's with flamethrower guys wow. the flame tank is a, a tank with flamethrowers their big scary top level vehicles called the avatar and that thing will kill your other vehicles to gain upgrades so just rip it up and place something on its shoulder oh god uh, of course how could i not forget the literal yes. suicide bomber unit you can what? build called the fanatics they, 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 they have nice they have bombs on their chests they, nice. they I don't know how more I can describe this. They run with their hands in the air and they go boom and they do a lot of damage. Yeah, I mean, there you go. Not our good people. They have a lot of personality though. The screen I have less to say about because they're, I mean, well, they're aliens. The idea of them is very alien. They sound alien. Their voice acting is, is actually, or whatever their sound mixing is really good. Actually, they all sound genuinely pretty alien. Honestly, the sound design of all their creatures is, is really good. There's a lot of effort put into it. <laughs> No. They're kind of just an amalgamation of, no. uh, well, of everything. There's plenty of alien, as in, you know, alien, alien. You've got okay. some The Day the Earth Stood Still with, like, their buzzer swarms and stuff. You've got some Independence Day in there. you got the War of the Worlds tripods. Mm -hmm. You've got quite a lot of just stuff pulled from other things. But in a weird way, when you pull from so much else, you almost kind of make your own thing. This and is they true. And unique, despite the fact that it's obviously inspired. This they is true. They also play super alien as well. They utilize Tiberium a lot to either buff their weaponry or it allows them to create more tiberium fields which acts as the game resource that's pretty important to you they have things like stasis fields and wormholes and mind control you know they're, they're doing all that kind of stuff despite that although they still feel familiar to play and pick up and playing them is pretty simple just like with the other two factions then you get to Kane's Wrath. Kane's Wrath okay. decided to expand upon the three rosters. Instead of going from just three factions, you now have nine. However, they're subsections of the original. So you've okay. got still GDI, not in Scrim, but now you have two sub factions per group. For GDI, we had the Steel Talons and the Zocom. Steel Talons. Steel, Steel Talons, Talons rule. rule. 
I gotta do it. It's always funny. Okay. They're an experimental weapon group that's generally focused around the ground combat and also walkers. They don't really build high level infantry like zone trooper sniper teams. They also don't build like the shatterer tank. However, they make up for it by different kinds of changes to all their other main tanks. Instead of okay. a fighter tank, you have the Titan. Instead of well, the Shatterer, you have the Wolverine. The Titan is a big walking giant that has a gigantic gun on its side. And the Wolverine is a massive anti-infantry murderer on legs. Their harvesters become heavy harvesters that are tankier and can put infantry inside of it. And their juggernauts, which are these enormous howitzers on legs, yeah. now can also fit infantry in them Yay. and have a little bit more of an AOE blast. Steel Talons is like that when you really want to just roll over your opponent utilizing nothing but tons of tanks. You have a, like 20 Titans and you've got some Juggernauts or no Behemoths in the back. <laughs> Wolverines ripping people apart. AP ammo is insanely powerful and it's just a damn good time. Zocom or Zone Operations Command is entirely based around working with you know really bad tiberium fields and stuff they also really like sonic stuff their orcas fire sonic things instead of oh. regular missiles for their aircraft they have the shatterer but it's the zone shatterer so it can fire this big old sonic blast at people and their zone troopers have become zone raiders which is exactly where i developed my kink for strong women in big fucking armor miss <laughs> me with that bikini armor shit cringe get me full plate zone raiders are actually really dope <laughs> instead of zone troopers with their big rail guns they've got aoe hey there's a reason we love the sisters of battle they're awesome sonic blasters and shoulder mounted anti-aircraft missile launchers honestly zocom in general can mass infantry and do a pretty damn good job at it mm. a lot of their infantry have great upgrades that they're allowed with this faction and mobilizing tons of zone raiders those missile troopers and then even some cyber teams here and there throw a commando in there there's a lot of strength in that army or you could fall back on the classic zocom strategy which is a million hammerhead gunships <laughs> with zone raiders. Just everything dies like you can't stop it it is it is insane as for nod you got two factions known as the marked of cain and the black hand the oh, black is hand wonderful. is my favorite faction in all of command and conquer i fucking love this faction so much if you don't <laughs> know what the black hand is it's fire fire in everything Yay. the black hand is actually a regular unit nod can create which is a group of flamethrower troopers and they're kind of a little heavier a little heavily armored however okay. this one it doubles up its specialization they completely forego all aircraft no aircraft at all and they put all their effort directly into flame your basic militant group is no longer that they're called the confessor cabal that has mind control grenades and all of their flame based things wait what come out promoted which i haven't talked about yet oh, in command nice. and conquer the idea of a veteran unit is taken seriously a unit that has survived a long period of time and killed a lot of things will become promoted the more promoted you are the tankier you are the more powerful you are with your weapons and if you reach the top become a heroic unit you have an increased fire rate and you have health regen so of the That's... four tiers regular promotion one two and top heroic coming out of promotion one naturally gives you an advantage good. not only that but you can have an upgrade that adds a black hand flamethrower guy to every infantry squad you make you just want some regular confessors with their guns there's a flamethrower guy in there missile launchers there's a flamethrower guy in there there's a flamethrower guy everywhere you, you get a flamethrower you get a flamethrower purifying flame do you know the power and the fun of taking two flame tanks with blue flame bringing it into the back line of your opponent's base and watching it said instantly melts every building they've ever had hell their giant walker the avatar it's called the pure fire now laser gun Yay. sure mounted flamethrower on every single one of them oh you know it they even have commandos which we'll talk about in a moment but they can make two of them and they both come out at full heroic rank max rank yeah oh yeah <laughs> black hand is fun you can literally <laughs> amass an entire group of infantry and you don't even need to tech for anti-infantry why tech for it? everyone has a flamethrower you True. already have it just mow them over in a wash of blue purifying flame i mean come on i play sisters of battle and warhammer is there any surprise i like this the marked of cain however bit weirder they're a little bit more on the cybernetic side of things we're okay. talking cyborgs regular military 
militant squads are in fact turned into something known as the awakened in fact oh, if you yay. have a bunch of militant squads dying you could actually have them rise up again from the dead as these awakened squads no. they have tiberium troopers which are a variant of the flamethrower black hand but they fire liquid tiberium instead that's a war crime they've yes. got tons of emps to go around everywhere remember guys good times rhymes with war crimes and they can upgrade a lot of their laser weaponry with a higher blue tier laser which on venom aircraft is <laughs> oh my god spamming blue laser venom aircraft is a strategy i've done quite often i mean they're tiberium loving techno fetishists for nod it completely parses finally with scrin we have reaper 17 and traveler 59 reaper 17 goes okay. hard into tiberium they mutilate themselves and they screw around with their bodies to add more tiberium upgrades whenever they can it's all about increasing the amount of tiberium buffing yourself with tiberium and having a really strong ground force that just rolls over people reaper 17 is a great steamroll faction because they forego their aircraft and let me tell you screen aircraft are pretty freaking good so foregoing mm. the aircraft you better have something good to make up for it and they absolutely do they even have giant green tripods they have this fancy unit called the ravager they're they're a good time. I like Reaper 17 quite a bit. Travel 59 is a little bit more weird, a little more experimental. They go harder into the aircraft. They have their little storm riders, which are these tiny harassment guys that I are like pretty those. good. But then you've also got their devastator warships, which are insanely long range artillery platforms. And then you've got your planetary yeah. assault carriers, which are, it's a gigantic carrier. And enough of those will kill anything and everything. They also- Basically the guardians and the carriers from Starcraft it makes a lot of sense like their mind control they can make things called cultists which are just doing oh, this is wonderful giant things on their head and they can mind control enemy units and it's a little bullshit, not gonna lie they have <laughs> range to mind control but they have unlimited range past that their commando also can aoe mind control and teleport and can mind control buildings you can mind control your buddies major construction yard and just sell it after teleporting they're they can be a little dumb i don't know how strong yeah. 59 are uh in like the meta game but you know some things don't need to be good to be fucking annoying <laughs> 59 so with all these nine factions what does this give us well it gives us an incredibly expansive and impressive rts game with a ton of variety but without ever feeling unfamiliar see despite all these sub factions no one really operates that different from each other it's just like specialization you know look at gdi their harvesters have little anti-infantry guns on their top the okay. steel talons ones are tankier that can put infantry in them and the zocom ones have missiles but they're all still just harvesters they still do the same thing you place down a refinery a harvester gathers tiberium and you get your money certain things like the reaper 17 can help expand their tiberium income and spike the growth of their areas but they still gather it all factions need power all factions have power plants you need to build infantry units are built from the infantry building every faction has an infantry building like this might sound obvious but it's the fact that in a game with nine factions it's so easy to understand exactly what's going on you know what the refineries look like you know which stuff gives what you know what power plants are you know what's important sure black this hand might not be building any airfields because they don't have aircraft but Oh, well, I don't need to build anti-aircraft. Good luck still, though. Flamethrower is still about. In fact, I, I think the thing I love the most about Kane's Wrath more than any other RTS game is that it feels like you're you're microing your macro that's really dumb sounding. That's so stupid. How? OK, um, I need to explain this. OK, go ahead. Strategery. OK, the game feels more macro heavy than it does micro. If you don't know those terms, micro is the, the high APM, crazy, insane Starcraft mm -hmm. player thing, right? Where they're moving Marines back forth, back forth, back forth. And all their units are going tiny little things, you know, micro stuff. Macro is your overall game knowledge and, and like building of resources. Back when I used to play RTS games, I had a very good macro game, but I had a very bad micro game. And what would wind up happening was I would wind up controlling the map, but losing most of the fights until I eventually starved them of resources. That was until I developed a micro game. And as a result, I wound up getting, yeah, I wound up doing fairly well 
in most of the ranked game, games that I played in. But um, that was years ago. It's it's actually two it's two very very separate games. You have the base development game, and then you have the actual unit to unit warfare. But some of the some of the micro that I've seen out of some players is just mind numbing. Tech trees, upgrades, expansions, things that don't involve tiny micro units. However, in StarCraft, a battle cruiser, you know, the biggest, most powerful unit in StarCraft, is built in 160 seconds, mm -hmm. two and a half minutes. A mammoth tank, the big, scary mammoth tank of the GDI, their highest level vehicle, takes 25 seconds to build. Right. The Marv, the gigantic vehicle that came out in Kane's Wrath, along with the Redeemer and the Eradicator Hexapod, 50 seconds. Double the time, practically a third of the battle cruiser. But at the same time, I feel like the units die at either the same speed or slower than they do in StarCraft. But okay. your resource deposits also go away much faster. Also, when you spend resources, you don't need to hit thresholds like you do in StarCraft. You don't need to have 50 minerals to create a Terran Marine. You just need to have anything in the queue and then as time goes it'll slowly be built if you're building a man like and you run out of money the production queue just halts and it waits till you get money again then it continues so with production so fast with units dying the same speed or slower than starcraft with tiberium getting removed faster which means you need to expand more and the actual build queues that are going on without needing to wait for a threshold and fighting over all of the neutral buildings like tiberium spikes on the map i feel like i'm microing my macro does it make any sense no like in starcraft right a standard terran marine can basically kill anything with enough volume or enough time hell a crap load of terran marines is a major strategy in starcraft because you put them somewhere and they'll kill anything in yeah one of the big strategies strategies in um before I think it was um, the third expansion, well, not the third expansion, the second expansion uh, for StarCraft II. Uh, there was Heart of the Swarm, and I can't remember the last one, but the last one pretty much threw a monkey wrench into a strategy that was called, it was 3M. It was Marine Marauder Medivac. And you could literally just make a full infantry death ball and that death ball would be capable of doing most of the work. Like it was, it was an absolute murder horse. And um, I liked using that against uh, Protoss players in particular because they would come up with their own murder ball. And if you just threw some, if you just threw some anti, some um, anti colossal anti air in there, you would just steamroll over a Protoss player trying to run a death ball. But yeah, enough with that. Command and Conquer, some fights just won't go anywhere. A Predator tank versus Rifleman squad. Tank isn't built for this squad. It'll kill them before the Rifleman squad does because the Rifleman squad does no damage against tanks, but it'll take forever. So having the right tool for the job is important, but it doesn't mean there's no micro either. One, you can make formations, which is the coolest thing ever, but also you can tell them to move backwards you can have them reverse pit bulls can move backwards and fire rockets at aircraft chasing them down hmm. this is an option this is an opportunity that tank may not be able to kill that rifleman squad but it can run it over and so when your opponent sees tanks coming towards his guys he better get them out of the way or they're just gonna crush them certain infantry though like zone troopers can't be crushed at least not by small things <laughs> Hell, production times are so fast that even if you lose a massive fight it's not gg that's the one thing that i always feel with like with starcraft is the moment i lose a major fight like the big the big battle then i have nothing at my base my production times all take too long i've lost the game it's it's literally over in command and conquer if you lose the big fight with your opponent you're still building in fact you can even build base defenses as a major part of it anti-infantry anti-tank or the really big one the sonic emitter or the the very popular one the obelisk of light 
which is what? such a badass building. So despite the fact that your opponent may have won this major fight, you're pumping out infantry, you're pumping out base defenses, you're pumping out stuff. It's not about just winning the fight and you've won. You need to follow up. If you spent so much time microwing your units and trying to get rid of your opponent's the fuck big is army, that in the background? and you neglected he didn't talk about your base, that, did he? you might not be able to finish the job. And because you've neglected your production cues, guess what? You're on even footing again. That win meant nothing. It just makes the game feel like it's never over until it's over resources don't completely see deplete. i don't like that they nearly as much grow over time slowly i'm a more of a fan of like you build your army and just because you lose a big battle in starcraft doesn't mean it's completely over if you damage enough if like if you completely and i mean it's it's a complete and utter wash you might it might be gg but in most every starcraft game i ever played losing you could lose several major battles in a row and still come out on top it just it was all about resource management and it was all about the it was all about the macro game but they do it harassment techniques like killing harvesters is a popular option but harvesters can always be rebuilt buildings mm -hmm. that have been damaged can be repaired just by clicking a button but it costs you money to repair things hell the use of multiple strike avenues i feel like is such an important part of command and conquer because you can have your big force right your infantry your tanks your walkers all the big stuff and you just move that force into your opponent the big fighting force you know mm -hmm. classic ground war but why have just this big frontline force without some aircraft support hell get some firehawk gunships and send them around the corner to bomb some of their important buildings <laughs> Maybe like a power plant or something if you're out of power you don't get a mini map if you're out of power your base defense is shut down so now you've got this giant front force and then you've got aircraft but what about more what about some harassment techniques go kill their <laughs> harvesters you got this big battle in the front micro some units in the back throw flame tanks in there to burn their refineries up send maybe even an engineer to steal one if you can get away with it bring in attack bikes because attack bikes are so annoying and use them yes. to kill all their harvesters off so even if they do win the fight you've killed their economy so now you've got big front force aircraft harassment why not that cherry on this sunday Bring in your commando. There's an old saying, the deadliest weapon in the world is a Marine and his rifle. Commando is the embodiment of that saying. A commando okay. is very small, not too squishy, but squishy enough, but he shreds infantry. He just mows them down at 1200 RPM and no infantry can stand a chance against him, but he can die pretty quickly to maybe some aircraft or something if he's out of position. That's why he's small. However, okay. if he reaches a building, well, one commando can destroy an entire base once he's in there what? once he's in and sabotaging your stuff and planting his bombs one commando can destroy your entire base and ruin everything for you once you hear that that beautiful and everything just explodes and there's problems the game will even tell you enemy commando detected to make it very clear that there's someone there so oh my god force aircraft support harvester harassment and a commando in their back lines blowing their shit up and you're telling me this isn't one of the best rts has ever made it's so much fucking fun and then you have all the support powers on the side of your screen things like i keep getting emails sorry guys strikes and you've got like tiberium catalyst missiles and radar jammers and and, and you can spawn a mothership and oh let's not even forget to talk about the super weapons ion cannons nuclear nice. missiles nice. a black hole all this shit coming together and a crazy amount of fun an awesome game and ea decided to tear it to the ground and completely stop making any of this shit. yeah the rts genre is dead red alert 3 if i'm not mistaken is yeah rts is completely dead at this point it, it's it's dead and gone it's not running wonderful on pc i think it's got problems with matchmaking or if there even is any and then the game after kane's wrath command and conquer 4 tiberium twilight and it fucking sucked. It was Oof. some of the worst RTSs I've ever played. It was genuinely 
terrible and i think this is like a good metric of the slow decline of ea's quality kane's wrath right now mm -hmm. it, it works you can play with people it's in 30 fps unfortunately which really sucks but an hd remake with 60 frames per second throw that thing on pc again just ea i know you're lazy i know you guys want the lowest amount of effort possible just update that just mm -hmm. i don't care I want this back in the world so I can watch more tournaments and stuff. In fact, there's still some of that going on right now. There is a channel I've been watching a lot lately for this video. It's called Cybert CNC Caster. He casts pro Command and Conquer Kane's Wrath games as well as some Red Alert stuff, but the Kane's Wrath stuff is immaculate. It is so entertaining to watch and it's so exciting. And the thought that this could come back is just <laughs> I know it won't because of course it won't and I'm just a guy oh my god it's so entertaining it's so good it's so good to watch I'll leave his channel in the description check it out it's I'll put it down there as well command and conquer content if that's so something that it's you, you can check game. it out down there so much polish so much care put into it I didn't even mention the 4x mode there's a mode like global conquest where you have like a 4x elements and then you do the fight like they, it's just there it's so good I've made myself sad. Hopefully one <laughs> day we'll make our way back. Until then, we got to deal with... What was that mobile game they made? Oh, God. Mm. Kane's Wrath. I think you need to buy Tiberium Wars first and then buy the expansion if you want to play it on Steam. I don't want people to buy it because, you know, EA. But it's <laughs> such an enjoyable experience. Oh, it's so much fun. I'm torn. Cognitive dissonance is holding two opposing ideals simultaneously. My ideals, giving EA money, more people playing Command and Conquer. I can't, I can't parse. It was a, a cornerstone of my middle school and high school time. Mm -hmm. And mm. I absolutely love it. And I wanted to gush about it. And I goddamn did it. And I'm proud of it. And that's it for me. Thank there you, you so much for watching. Thank you to my beautiful patrons. Oh. There you go. So, Ricky broke that game down pretty well. Um, there's not that much that I know about it. But I didn't know half of the stuff. That, like, I watched a couple of videos on this. But I didn't know half the stuff. Wow, I have a lot of dust in this room. Wow. Um, sorry. Either that or it's ghosts. In any case, um, he broke down a lot of things in there that, um, well, I don't know too much about Command and Conquer. I didn't know about the multiple factions in Kane's Wrath. I do know that that was one of the most campy things. My friend played these games. I did not play these games. I was too busy dealing with StarCraft multiplayer and unlimited resource maps where you'd literally just build. If you were a Zerg player, you built 45 hatcheries and just started mass launching guardians in the mid. And it was ridiculous. In any case, in any case, um, he was, he's Command and Conquer. I'm, I'm StarCraft. That's just the way it was uh, for as far as good RTS games back in the day. Um, and then, of course, you have Black Crusade, everything else like that. <sighs> RTS games used to be so good, and then they just got screwed up. And that they just got screwed up. The last good gasp of RTS games for me was StarCraft II. In any case, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. I have a description. In the description down below, I have a Discord. And that's actually where I got this from. This was the most requested video uh, to be watched. And, um... Yeah, if you'd like to see something, just go in there, pop it in. People have been screaming at me to shut the Request Reaction channel down. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. I'll have to see. I'll have to put up a poll or something. I don't know. In any case, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to try to feel better the next couple of days, and I'll catch you guys next time.